In today's video, we're going to be covering some FPV news, which means basically which companies are closing down. Some you probably didn't even expect would close down. And also take a look at some new products because I really want to know your feedback on them. And I'll also give an opinion or two on each until we receive them or until they're actually released. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to start with the Eoshin EV300D. Now, there isn't really much to say until you actually try them because with goggles, it's usually hit and a miss and the specs on paper look amazing. But when you put them on, you get something completely different. For example, Top Sky was a really great example of that. And um, yeah, so that's something we should just actually wait on a little bit. But I also want to hear your thoughts on it. I think it's going to be good. Now, if it's going to outperform or be somewhat on par to the SkyZone O3 OLEDs or the LCD, then this is a pretty good price point, but they have to at least beat the SkyZone O2X, the new ones, by 40%, like a noticeable difference. This is my opinion, and this is how it would make sense to me. Now, let's move along to the next one, which is the HDLRC Parrot 132. Now, HDLRC has been known in the previous for not so great quality, but recently they have upped their game quite dramatically and I've been using some of their components actually pretty consistently. Most of the products I'm using right now are basically HDLRC stuff. For example, these HDLRC parrots, they fly unbelievably amazing. Unbelievably amazing. I'll have a couple linked down below that I'm currently flying. Uh, these little three inch toothpicks, 2.5 inch toothpicks, they're just really, really great all around. They could take a little beating here and there and they just perform. So that's something really nice, and they're tuned out of the box. So it's a really hassle-free um, quadcopter. You just plug it in and just enjoy it. And they even give you FlySky receivers as well, which is really nice also if you're using a Nirvana or something like that. Now, they are also very well priced. As you can tell, $115. This is a 3-inch. However, this one's a little bit different because this one's going to be a 5 to 6S. So um, I don't know if that's overkill. I think it's overkill. But it's going to be pretty interesting to see this. Now, if we, I don't even think we have like 300 milliamp 6S LiPos. So I think you probably have to do like two 3S HVs stuck together in a way, 300 milliamps, in order to get this. But I think you're going to get a ton of flight time. If this works out great and it's more about efficiency than power, then it might just be amazing, but it's it's really difficult to know unless you actually try this stuff. So there's high potential and there's also high failure. So we're going to see what's going to happen with this. I'm definitely going to get this eventually and uh, I'll be testing it and see what kind of uh, performance we could expect from this. So uh, this is really interesting. And again, everything here is linked down below. Happy model. Happy model. Where does happy model is at? Where, do, where does it fit into the whole market? Happy model, I would put it right in between it's basically, you know, Eoshin goes to Happy Model, rebrand most of their stuff. But Happy Model is between low budget to mid-range. It's right in the middle, you know. Uh, you know, it's, it's like, it's really cheap components. They perform really great most of the time. Actually, almost, just about almost everything I've recently gotten from the Happy Model, uh, especially the Larva, they're just really, really great. However, the motor durability is quite questionable at times. It's not as strong as other motors, for example, like the Flywoo. Uh, my favorite, you know, toothpick slash three inch, uh, 11XX motor is the Flywoo, uh, 7650KV. That's a really, really great motor. Uh, really great, really powerful, really strong, very durable, which is something, um, I look for and I think is, uh, actually really great. So with the Larva X, it's, Slightly more expensive than their other ones here for a couple reasons. As we can tell, they're giving us two 450 milliamp tattoo batteries. Those are like the premium best batteries you can buy or some of the premium. And they also give you a 3D printed canopy as well as some ducts if you wanted to use them, which I think is actually really nice. They've done that, but I want to know the, the, uh, the, the battery size here. So, and they're giving you 3S 400 milliamp um, are these HVs? I think these are HVs. 11.4. Uh, I'm not sure if they're HVs. I need to calculate. I don't have it on top of my head. But they're giving you two 3S uh, 450 milliamp tattoos. That's really great. And look at the options you can use uh, with the with the receiver. You can use TBS Crossfire, FR Sky. But again, this is all nice. 
but it has to perform good. And um, I really like the 1102 motors and the 11, 1103 motors from them, but not from durability's perspective, from efficiency, flight time. Uh, you could use crappy batteries and get really, really good flight time. So uh, this is going to be a really interesting one, and I do have really high hopes for this personally. And again, it even has HD camera on board, so that's really nice. Now, next down the line, we have a new Hollybro Copus 3-inch. Now, uh, this is really nice. It's a complete kit that's ready. You have one that's ready for a DJI Air unit, and you also have one with the DJI Air unit installed. So if you had a goggles and the, the controller, you could just immediately purchase this and start flying it. Just bind it and fly, and you're good to go. Now, the onboard um, components that are being used for this 3-inch should handle quite a while especially on small motors like this they're giving you the you know the top of the line they're giving you a 30 by 30 stack this is the f7 hdv with the tico 32 for 45 amp this is a really great stack however for some reason you burned you broke your dji air unit this flight controller does not have osd so what does that mean well, what that means is that if you wanted to put an analog camera, you're not going to have the information. You're not going to have OSD. That's it. You're just going to have to connect your camera directly to that video transmitter, whatever you might install after it, and then you'll be good to go. But more than likely, you're just going to end up replacing your DJI Air unit if you crash and break it or something happens to it. Uh, but just keep that in mind. That's very useful information. So this is a really, I think, reasonable price. I, I don't know. Um, I, you need to test it first. But the ducks look great. You know, uh, They look 3D printed. Anyways, we'll see if I can get my hands on this and we can actually test it out. Uh, so it's kind of like a scene whoop DJI setup. There's a lot of companies are going DJI. Now I do have this one and I didn't get to fly. Why didn't I get to fly? Because I couldn't see. And why didn't I, could, what, and why couldn't I see? Well, it's because they used metal screws for the Cadex turtle and um, that's creating very bad noise. And I had to replace them to, uh, what is it? Plastic standoffs and that's gone now. Uh, but I, basically still haven't been able to fly it because it's been raining since that day. So this is going to be pretty interesting here. Uh, we'll see how well it performs. I mean, the, the build construction, the, the overall looks of it is absolutely insane and it's heavy as shit. But um, it's interesting. I mean, it's different. That's, that's all I got to say to it. It's using really, really powerful motors. And I, they all, and, and I know for a fact they're going to be releasing 7-inch arms because obviously these motors were meant for like a 7-inch propeller. Uh, so, yeah, you'll be able to run that as well. So that's going to be also really great. Um, uh, time will tell. This one is different. So it's a Diatone TMC Airblade 3-inch. So a lot of people are going down to 3-inch. Well, it is whoop season since winter. A lot of people like to go smaller uh, so, since, since they fly indoors. 200 bucks is kind of expensive, in my opinion, uh, for a 3-inch when you can buy their other 3-inch that's like 120 bucks in which is amazing so i don't know what they're going or what they're trying to do with this here i mean it doesn't even have a cadex 4k it just has a cadex turtle v2 here um am i missing something here three to a 4s it's just a 4s quadcopter tbs unify very great uh video transmitter they're using the mumba f405 it's even an f4 come on diatone come on you can't do this it's an f4 so Yep, a bit questionable, I might say, but I think the price will immediately change. I think this is wrong. This has to be wrong. Let's go to this. Now, this is really cool from iFlight. So here what they do is you can buy this whole package without the controller, um, but basically you have a ready-built quad with the goggle for $868. Now, I think it's a pretty good deal because you can buy the goggle alone for $530. And now discussing the $530 for the DJI goggle itself, just by itself alone is around 530 bucks. And again, it makes you question a fat shark, an orca, you know, it's just, you know, I might as well just get the DJI. You, you know what I mean? And uh, if I don't get those, then I might as well just go down to a Sky Zone OLED. And in my opinion, that seems to be the most logical. Uh, for example, like a nice backup, you know, analog goggle would be a Sky Zone. And then you just get yourself a DJI and, um, yeah, I think you'll be set for a while, for a really long time. Um, I'm not thinking any time. All I use is my SkyZone OLEDs. Even though I have the HDO, the HD3s, and all these things, the, the OLEDs are just insane. They're really, really nice goggles. So, yeah, this is a pretty cool uh, setup here. This is a really nice frame, and the components they're using, I think, is the budget line. So, this is a 6S quadcopter. 
Uh, so keep that in mind. So yeah, it's it's in stock. So if you want one, go grab one. Uh, Christmas is around the corner. This one might not make sense to a lot of people. This is the Matex system optical flow LiDAR sensor. And what that does is it does a couple things. One thing is it has a sonar in it. So um, if you're flying indoors, what this will do, I think just on INAV right now. Yeah, for INAV. So if you're flying indoors, uh, obviously there's no GPS log. So what it'll do will start recording the, the floor basically. And if it senses flow, which is movement, then it'll fix itself and adjust itself. And I also see a trig and an echo pad right here. This is for sonar, but this thing is not sonar. So I'm kind of confused unless it's doing a dual purpose within that same module here, or if this is truly a LiDAR itself, this is a LiDAR sensor. Um, that's pretty insane actually. So it's a LiDAR sensor and a flow sensor at the same time. So I, I, I don't know, I've never, I haven't checked the sensor. So I need to read up the data sheet on the sensor. But that's awesome. I mean, it's Maytech. I trust Maytech. So they, they do everything in house. You know, you know, whenever whenever you're in doubt of what to get, and there's a Maytech in front of you, just grab a Maytech. More likely, you just you'll be set to go. And a lot of people would agree with me. They do all their stuff in house. They do their research. They send to the proper people to test, and um, they do a really great job. That's why they're still in the game. A lot of companies are closing. I always closing. SZ Speed is closing. Uh, DOIS is closing. A lot of companies are starting to close. Maytech has been in the game much, much longer. And it doesn't even, you know, it's just right there in the background. It has its own market share. Maytech is just amazing. And, you know, I, I say that with 100% full confidence and that a lot of people would agree with me because Maytech is a beast. This one here is a little bit off topic. I find it interesting. I'm going to buy two of these. Um, it's, it's really interesting because it's basically a USB power supply. I'm like, okay, what the hell is that? So, you know, USB, when you plug anything in a USB, not the new USB-C chargers and stuff, it's usually 5 volts. But this thing can step up that 5 volt into 9, 12, 24 volts. So it, it's really nice under that perspective. So, like, okay, what the hell can I use this for? Well, for example, you can stick it in your power bank and you wanted to boot up a video transmitter on 9 volts, you have those screw terminals in the back where you can actually put the power of your video transmitter to test it or camera to test it, and um, you can get that. Not only that, it also has a USB-C input. Uh, so it can take up to 9 volts. It can take those fast charging. So we have a USB-C input here. Unfortunately, the pictures aren't really that clear on many things here. But it's saying USB-C input. It also has a micro USB input. So you don't even have to plug that USB in there. And then the outside, the out is obviously on the other side. And you could choose the output voltage. But again, this is not going to be handling a lot of current. We can see here it says no more than uh, uh, 2 amps, basically. Of current is going to amps, and there's also protection on there, so that's really great. This is very useful for a lot of things. It could come really handy in not only drones and other things as well. For example, if you watched my previous video where I fixed the IP camera and I didn't have an adapter, then I could have just used this, set the voltage, and then just soldered the wires and plugged them into that and tested if it's working or not. So it's very convenient. That's what I'm trying to say, and it's at a very good price. So Hopefully it's going to be good and uh, I'll be definitely picking a couple of these up and I'll do a separate video on this because I really truly believe this deserves a separate video on. And um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about FPV news. So again, back to my goggle topic. Now the goggle topic is, I think I'm going to go HD and just stick to my sky zones. I don't think I'm going to switch over to Orca. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard the Orca is supposed to have some Bluetooth or some Wi-Fi system that will actually broadcast uh, down to your phone. I'm not sure if that was really implemented or is that really there? I know someone told me that I forgot who told me that But when I heard that I was like, oh, that's that's a HDO killer and um, But now I, I don't know anything anymore to be honest It's uh, we're gonna have to wait till January February to figure all everything out if there's any problems if there's any issues if there's any Defects, you know kind of like when the HDO first got released with the, I think the DVR issue also the screen issue or they released the DVR update which screwed up the screens or something of that nature. But when you're with Fatshack, you really don't have to worry. You just send it back to them and they'll fix it for you. So that's really nice in that perspective. Hopefully Orca is going to be the same. And uh, SkyZone also is somewhat the same. You just have to figure out how to contact them. And um, they usually say, you know, if you ever have a problem with a company, for example, you bought a 
Holly, bro. Don't write Banggood unless it came damaged or something. Write Holly, bro. They'll fix your problem. Um, so write the main company. Always go back to, to the main company and they'll make sure they take care of you as long as you have the invoice. And that's it. Everything will be taken care of. Because either way, Banggood's going to have to go back to that person and do that whole process. But you can only imagine how much of a pain that would actually be instead of you just going directly there. Because either way, they were going to go there to the main company where you bought it from and well everything is linked down below let me know what you guys think down in the comment section also if you guys want to see a video on tools uh interesting new tools and stuff uh i can do that also and i have a new project upcoming uh which has to do with uh, oca laminating which is basically it's going to be pretty interesting i'm gonna have a couple videos on those hopefully they do pretty good either if they don't um it's going to be pretty fun for a lot of people and well I'll see you in our next one, guys. Peace out.